the football terrace 125k should i hit subscribe i don't know yet let me check it out videos three hours ago bruno fernandez agrees terms with man united hmm I like this Bruno Fernandez guy. Is there anything else on Bruno Fernandez on this channel? Oh, whoa, yesterday too. Bruno Fernandez deal update. Hmm. The day before, Bruno Fernandez update. Three days ago, welcome to Manchester. How will Bruno Fernandez? Blah, 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 blah. Bruno Fernandes update. Jetson Fernandes signs for Tottenham. Manchester United to sell Luke Shaw. Jetson Fernandes and oh, more and more on Bruno Fernandes, huh? Done deal. Question mark. Manchester United signed Bruno Fernandes. Okay. All right. Bruno Fernandes to Man United done? Exclamation mark. Question mark. Hmm. You guys are really interested in this kind of content, though. I should start talking a bit more about Bruno Fernandes. I should. Whoa. Anything else on Bruno? Oh, whoa, six days ago. Bad news, Bruno Fernandes to Man United. Oh, Bruno Fernandes to Man United, very close. 32K, 19, these are some good ass numbers. Man United to sign Bruno Fernandes, that's one week. Oh man. Oh man, if you wanna get your Bruno Fernandes update, you know where to go. The football terrace, damn. Jeez. Ooh. Oh, but I, I think that's it. That's it. That is it. Solid content, though. Solid freaking content. But, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Dominic Rich. Back up in the house with the vlog for January 17th, 2020. Where I'm going to give you guys so much information, so many cool stories that you're going to want to come back for more day after day after day. And don't worry, I won't be talking about the same thing every day. I can guarantee you just that. But I really appreciate the very few of you guys who come back day after day for the vlogs. Yesterday, I made one, so don't forget to go check it out. The playlist is on the channel. The best football vlog uh, on planet Earth. That, that didn't come out too good, but still, focus. Best football vlog on planet Earth. And you could be entertained and informed at the very same time. So, guys, for today's vlog, I have some shout-outs. You know I always start with some shout-outs. I have some shout-outs for you guys. First shout out goes to Universal Artist. What's up, my man? He has been with the channel since 2018, if I could recall, and truly, truly deserves a shout out. Next up, Kevin McPherson. Big up, Dominic, watching straight out of Guyana. Kevin, do you know that Ryan Fredericks and Ruben Loftus Cheeks? I, I almost said Luben. Luben. <laughs> Do you know that Ryan Fredericks and Ruben Loftus Cheeks has Guyanese heritage? Do you know that? One plays for West Ham in Fredericks and Loftus Cheeks plays for Chelsea. Lots of cheeks. Ooh. Next up, Sully Online. Sully Online, what's up? He says he's watching from Tanzania. And Sully, fun fact for you. If 27-year-old Genk striker Mbwana Samata signs for Aston Villa, because he's been rumored to be going to Aston Villa, he would become the first ever player from Tanzania to feature in the Premier League. So I hope it happens. Mbwana Samata is a very, very potent striker, at least in the Belgian League. I don't know how he'll do in the Premier League, but he has been capped 51 times for Tanzania scoring 18 goals. He is their captain and he is an inspirational figure in the East Coast of Africa. Mbwana Samata. I love the name too. I love the name. Next shout out goes to Foon Jun Meng. What's up, Foon? He says Liverpool adjust a different class at Anfield. 
will be an easy win for Liverpool against Minnows Man United. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Minnows. Minnows. Last shout out goes to Karen Angela Brown. Isn't worried that the Afghan is getting moved back to January, February. She thinks the likes of Curtis Jones and Takumi Minamino will step up. Of course, I think teams are going to prepare for the fact that Afghan is being shifted back to January, February. Teams will prepare. And you know how they're going to prepare? They won't spend a lot on the big African players like the Koulibaly, etc. They won't. And that's how they'll prepare. I heard that Man City are already pulling out of the Koulibaly deal. Like they 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 backing off basically. Not that there was a deal on the table, they just backing off from the whole Koulibaly thing. I like Koulibaly a lot. I would love for us to have him in the team, but if he goes to play the Afghan and Senegal makes a deep run in the tournament, he'll be gone for about four to six weeks. And if he comes back, he'll come back tired and he could come back injured and he could miss the remainder of the season so it's a big big risk but that's it for the shout out segment i hope you guys enjoyed the first seven minutes or so of the video i hope you're still here because i have a lot of more fun stuff to come in order to build up to the point i want to make i have to start in france really 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 i have to start in france monaco and psg just played back-to-back -back matches this week. They were both league on fixtures. With the Paris leg ending in a thrillmatic 3-3 draw. And the Principality leg was a landslide with PSG winning the match. Four goals to one where former Monaco youngster Kylian Mbappe scored twice. Didn't celebrate the first goal, but he did for the second. Got a little stick from the crowd, but he just had to. He just had to. He paid his respect for the first goal, but the second goal, the man just had to celebrate the sweet victory over his former team. 4-1, that's a thrashing. PSG are definitely going to win Ligue 1, without a doubt. If you have anything to say about that, let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think Marseille or Lille or even Olympic Lyon or Monaco could take this Ligue 1 title away from them this season? I, I really, really don't think so. I, I don't think so. But, but, where I'm getting at, where I'm really, really getting at is, who is the best front three in Europe this season? Is it PSG's front three? Is it Real Madrid's front three? Is it Barcelona? Man United? Man City? Bayern Munich? Juventus? Lazio? Inter? Or is it Liverpool's front three like a whole lot of you guys are claiming? Is it Liverpool's front three? Do they have the best front three in Europe? Well, I'm going to debunk this whole thing right now. And let's start with PSG. Well, as for the numbers, I'm combining three players. And, you know, there could be different combinations. But for every thing that I'm going to list here, for every team, it's the best three combination I could come up with. Neymar, Mbappe, and Icardi. Has 51 goals between them, 22 assists. That's 73 goal involvement. It's ridiculous. It's like sick. Di Maria, Cavani, Chupamoting, and Pablo Sarabia combined, these players have 27 more goals. I'm talking about in all competitions. And 21 assists. This is just insane goal scoring by PSG. They are the best in France. Of course, they are the best in France. Monaco's front three has 27 goals between them. In La Liga, Messi, the now injured Suarez, and Griezmann has 39 goals, 24 assists between them. Real Madrid isn't even in the conversation. If we move over to Syria, Syria Immobile with 23 goals already this season, Joaquin Correa and Felipe Caicedo has 34 goals, and 13 assists for Lazio. Dybala, Ronaldo, and Higuain has 35 goals and 19 assists. Lukaku, Lutaro, and Kandreva has 36 goals and 12 assists for Inter. And if we go over to the German Bundesliga, 
Bayerns Gnabry, Lewandowski and Thomas Muller has 46 goals and 23 assists between them. Leipzig's Zabitza, Werner and Emil Forsberg has 42 goals and 21 assists. I did all this basically to make the point right here, this point, and to hush up a lot of people. Especially the Liverpool fans watching this. Those who think, not all of them, those who think that Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, and Roberto Firmino are Europe's best front three. Like, they can't, they can't seem to see past these three. But I'm just making a point here. Liverpool does not have the best front three in Europe. They do not. Salah, Mane, and Firmino has 38 goals. 28 assists between them. They have a lot of assists because they assist each other with these 38 goals. Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson also chipped in quite a lot. Liverpool's midfield, maybe 10 to 11 assists between them. All of them. All the midfielders. It is, it's ridiculous. No wonder people say that Liverpool has no midfield. I know some of you guys are going to want to criticize me and, you know, talk in the comment section down below. But I don't care. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to speak facts and opinions as well. Facts and opinions. Get it right. But, you know the front three in England that are better than this Liverpool front three? Man United's Greenwood Martial and Rashford, who has scored goals this season at a quicker rate than Liverpool's front three. I'm talking about in all competitions, guys. These guys also has 12 assists. For Man City, Aguero, Sterling and Mares has 47 goals between them and 22 assists. Of course, there's other combinations I could use, you know, Bernardo Silva, Gabriel Jesus, or even for the other teams, there's different variations of the front threes. But Liverpool's front three has definitely been potent. They have been one of the most consistent front three. I'm going to say this. They, they have been one of the most consistent coming from previous seasons where they have scored goals on a consistent basis and picking up assists on a consistent basis. They won the Champions League, got to the final in back-to-back -back years, won the Super Cup, won the Club World Cup, currently on top of the league right now. So they definitely deserve some credit, but they are not the best. You can call them the most consistent front three because these guys have been together for the longest period. You know, PSG brought in Icardi, Barca brought in... Griezmann, you know, City's front three always changing up. Man United, Greenwood just came into the picture. And over in Bayern Munich, they brought in Perisic, Coutinho. Gnabry just rose to stature. So, Liverpool front three is amongst the best in Europe. But this season, they are not the best. Maybe it's an old debate, but they are not the best. The likes of Man United, Man City, Bayern Munich, PSG, are better. Good argument or not? What's my prediction for a Liverpool-Man United match this weekend? A 1-1 draw. That's my prediction, a 1-1 draw. Man United to pick points off Liverpool once again. And since we are on the Man United topic, Harry Maguire has been appointed Man United's captain, taking over from Ashley Young, who is rumored to be out the door into Milan or interested in the fullback. He's 34 years old. He has lost a lot of pace. And I, I really don't know why Inter are interested in this player. I think he would have been perfect for... Maybe an Aston Villa. Go back to Villa. Go back to Villa. Or maybe go to help out Bournemouth or one of these teams. But maybe they can't afford his wages. Maybe the wages could be a thing. Or go back to the championship. Help out one of those teams down there. But Inter Milan, uh, I don't know. Following the footsteps of Lukaku. Following the footsteps of Chris Marlin going to Italy. 
But guys, let me know your thoughts on this thing in the comment section down below. Let us move on. Brighton Hove and Albion have confirmed that they are going to match the donations to the Australian Bushfire Emergency Fund made by Aussie players Matt Ryan and Aaron Moy. That is straight class. My heart goes out to all the victims out in Australia, the people, the animals, and of course, Mother Nature, who is suffering the most. Like... It's a bad, it's, a, it's just a bad situation. And I hope it gets resolved pretty soon and it doesn't happen again in the future. Man United's Sergio Romero has featured in 53 matches for Man United and kept 34 clean sheets. It baffles me. It really baffles me to why they don't use Sergio Romero more often. 53 appearances, 34 clean sheets. He's being used in mostly... The Europa League or cup match, or the, the insignificant ones. But when it gets to like the knockouts, the hair comes right back in. I suggest you just give the man a chance. This is a keeper who got to the final of the 2004 World Cup. Give him a chance. Even Dean Henderson, who is currently on loan at Sheffield United, deserves a chance over David De Gea who shipped 50-plus goals last season and probably will do the same this season. It baffles me, seriously. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this whole Sergio Romero situation. Let me know if he should be awarded Man United's number one keeper position. Sell the hair, cash in, either bring back Dean Henderson or promote Romero. But you know what I suggest? Sheffield would want to hold on to Dean Henderson. So he's going to be sold for, to Sheffield for maybe like 20 to 25 million pounds. Sell De Gea. Sell him to one of these clubs. Any, anybody. Anybody. PSG, Juve, or whoever wants to get him. And promote Romero. Promote Romero. And bring in a younger keeper as backup. That's just my suggestion. So let us move on. Oh, you know what? You know what? Since it's Man United and I digress. I digress. Ollie McBurney, who was acquired by Sheffield from Swansea last summer, still goes to watch his beloved Swans play and was spotted at the South Wales derby between Cardiff and Swansea in the championship. That's an eight hour round trip we're talking about. Eight hours round trip, 42 miles away from Sheffield. It's crazy. Receiving a letter from the FA, Sheffield United manager says he can relate and thinks it's quite refreshing, to be honest. Ali McBurney was bought for £17 million from Swansea and has four goals and 24 appearances, mostly off the bench. I absolutely love this story and I love what Sheffield United are doing in the league this season. Seriously, they did good business, they kept most of their players. They kept most of their players happy and they're doing the damn thing. They will stay up. They will stay up to play next Premier League season, which is going to be a very, very interesting one. With maybe Liverpool as the defending champions. What do you, th what do you think, guys? Maybe Sheffield would be in the Europa League. Maybe they won't want that, but maybe they do. Maybe they want to play European football. But the thing is, if you play European football, it could definitely affect your Premier League season. And you could go back down. But let's see how this one works out. Go Sheffield! Another juicy one for you guys. Watford's game against Tranmere has been rescheduled from January, I think it was just a couple of days ago, to January 23rd. Because of a waterlogged field. If Watford defeats Tranmere on the 23rd, in this FA Cup replay, they will play four games in seven days. And these will be the matches. Home to Spurs on January the 18th. Away to Villa on January the 21st. The replay match on the 23rd, two days later. Away to Tranmere. And then home to Man United on the 26th. And that's exactly what Watford does not want. When you think about that schedule, 
four matches in seven days, you got to say, wow. You got to say, wow, to the FA. Like, wow. They should have just played the match on the waterlogged outfield. Just get it over with. Whoever wins, wins. It would prevent you from playing four matches in seven days. And with Watford on the surge, trying not to get relegated, this could hurt them. It could hurt them. They could lose against Spurs and, you know, the Villa match is very key as well. So we just have to wait and see how this one works out. I suggest Watford um, play the youth team against Tranmere and let them, let them, you know, go into the fourth round of the FA Cup. But it, it's going to be tough. And the last story for today, guys, Coventry City will face Birmingham in this season's FA Cup fourth round. Only thing is, Birmingham will be the away team in their own stadium since the two teams share the same stadium. The two teams will therefore split the stands between each other since they're both home and away at the same damn time. Guys, imagine, imagine if it ends in a draw and there's another replay. Next time, Birmingham will be the home team at home this time and Coventry will be the away team at home this time. I actually hope that Coventry City defeats Birmingham in the first the first match. I hope there's not a replay and Coventry wins the first game and defeat Birmingham City in their own home ground. That would be a great story. I'll be back to give the results on that one. So guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I really enjoyed, you know, doing it and I enjoy doing this segment because I get to talk about some football stories that no one else on YouTube actually talk about. That's the fun part of it. So if you're new around here and you enjoy it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave a big thumbs up, share it with a friend. Visit cardsplug.com slash Dominic Rich FC. If you do decide to buy something, use the coupon code Dominic Rich FC to get yourself 15% off. Thanks again for watching the video. And from your dare hunting presenter, Dominic, I like to say peace out. Rich Squad. That's a wrap. They should have just played the match in the, you know, they should have just played the match in the water league. They should have just played the match in the waterlogged field. They should have just played the match on the waterlogged 